what's going on YouTube? It's your buddy Will at the What's Up in the Sky 37 channel or online at www.whatsupinthesky.com. Quick update on space news. Sorry I haven't been back with anomaly videos. I'm still working on my top anomalies video, but I am have the slides done. It just needs the voiceover work now, and everything else is ready to rock. So hopefully I'll have that thing out this weekend. I'm trying to spend the rest of the night tonight working on it and getting it going. And uh, let's take a look at some of the space news because I missed a lot. I've been gone for a couple of days here just getting ready, working on the slides in the background, answering questions, answering. It, the channel's been blowing up a lot lately, so I've been getting all sorts of questions, all sorts of hate from different people. Just imagine the stuff we get here. Um, Look at this rover wheel. NASA says that after the time, look at Mars is chewing up the wheels. Look at the hole here, the hole down here. It's definitely taking a beating on it. So uh, they've really held up nice. I mean, it's been up there for a while. But it's interesting to see it, you know, that rocky terrain, what it's done to the rover. Um, I wonder if this will, you know, from this data, they can work to see what they can use in the future there. And uh, I guess we get a little bit of science from everything. We learn a little bit of stuff. So, and here you can find this right on NASA.com. The team operating the NASA Mars rover Curiosity has completed a software upgrade on the vehicles, planning and check of the wear and tear on the rover's wheels. It's kind of neat. Like, as the everything is uh, progressing, like, as the mission progresses, if there's an issue they need to do, um, like, they needed to, to balance something out on one of the wheels or something because when they're on slopes, the arm doesn't reach a certain way. So they doing that. They figure it out on their rover here, and then they upload it, just like firmware on a website or firmware on a uh, piece of hardware. Um, but anyway, I thought that was interesting coming at you. There's, of course, with the other thing, NASA going on right now, and uh, the uh, I guess all the space agencies, the spacewalks. Of course, there's going to be three ordered to fix the broken part. Um, and it looks like we're getting ready to go out and do it. It's NASA, NASA astronauts are wrapping up their preparations for Saturday spacewalk. Japanese astronaut is completing his review of the task, and he will perform a robotic arm operator during a spacewalk. The spacewalker is finishing collecting their tools, and they will use outside the ISS. The duo also finished setting up their spacesuits they will wear Sunday. The first spacewalk is scheduled for Saturday at 7.10 a.m. Eastern Time, when the spacewalkers will set up the work site on the S-1 truss. First, they will disconnect the cables to the faulty pump module and install the jumper cables. Um, they will then open the insulation cover of the pump up. So it's interesting work that they got going on. This will set up Monday's space work, also at uh, 7.10 a.m. Um, they're going to go, okay, see, they will exit the airlock, go back to the truss work site, they will remove the faulty pump and replace it with the spare pump. I guess it's good that they have it up there, because they've, as of now, they've canceled all the, uh, you know, the resupply missions and stuff up there, why they work on getting this done. So, if necessary, Christmas Day Spacewalk is planned to finalize the installation of the spare pump module. The last time a spacewalk took place on Christmas Day was in 1974, during the Skylab 4 mission. Wow, interesting. Um, it's been a while, so it'll be interesting to see what happens here, if they can fix it, just to show uh, humans' ingenuity in space. Can we get out there, fix it, deal with what comes? Uh, I mean, if we're going to move off into interstellar, if we're going to hit space one day and we want to get off this planet and, and, and head somewhere else, we're going to have to be able to deal with stuff on the fly. So it's interesting. With today's, what's really neat is today's 3D printers and stuff like that. I really think that's going to be the future. And as we figure out how to heat stuff up and, and, and how to make different polymers and, and maybe integrate some of the metals with some of that stuff and the strength and the nanotechnology, we're going to have some really cool stuff we can build. I mean, we could make, as long as we have, the uh, the die itself, we could just have a a block of of you know a big block of of the the polymers and the ink for these 3D printers and just print out the stuff we need up there. Um, and the technology is coming so far that you can add certain things to make it stronger, or if you don't need it strong, you make it less strong. So it's be interesting. See how that goes forward and, and, and as we move forward in space. What's really cool to me, because the private industry is starting to get into it, and there's another one on space.com. Private Mars lander launching in 2018 will build on NASA legacy. Uh, once again, this is the Mars One Project. If you're not familiar with it, you can find their website uh, out there. Just search for Mars One Project. There's a lot of good videos on it. A lot of people have signed up to go on a one-way trip to Mars, and this is part of it. So let me read a little bit of the article to you, and I'll leave the link as always. You can watch it, and I'm going to go ahead and get back to my top Mars Anomalies video. 
Mars is gearing up to send uh, Mars One is gearing up to send an unmanned lander to the red planet that would follow the mold of NASA's successful Mars landers. The Netherlands-based nonprofit has sealed a deal in, with security and aerospace company Lockheed Martin to develop a mission concept for its lander. Well, if they're dealing with Lockheed, this is no joke. You know, the people who are doing this and were behind it really said this is no joke. We we want to do this. We've got the funding. We're working on the funding. All right, so the service craft is slated to launch towards the Red Planet along with a communications satellite in 2018, six years before Mars One aims to blast four people towards Mars on its way to one-way colonization mission. Based on NASA's Phoenix Lander, Mars will Lander will be include a new thin solar cells with a water extraction experiment, and other demonstration technologies will require one will be required for human settlement on Mars. Um, there's some good links on this stuff to talk about how it's going to get there and how it's going to work. So Phoenix is a proven delivery system, um, a civil engineer said from Lockheed Martin, who was the program manager for NASA's Phoenix Lander flight system. All right. So apparently they're working with NASA. To, that's good because NASA's put stuff on there. We've actually got it, amazingly gotten stuff. <laughs> it's gotten there each time. I tell you what, a lot of people have tried to put stuff on Mars and had issues. So, you know, the United States have, and NASA has done a very well job with that. So here's the, uh, the artist concept here of the Mars One lander. Pretty interesting. Um, let's see what we got here for the other PIA. Oh, that was just the, uh, the rover's wheels, but... Anyway, guys, hope you guys are doing well. Like I said, I've been uh, MIA for a little bit. If uh, you're new to my channel, I hope you hit subscribe. If you just saw this video this first time you're watching, usually my channel we do anomalies. I've been working on, I haven't done any like long anomaly videos lately just because I've been working on this new, uh, this new video, uh, which is going to be neat. I've got it up basically, let me see here, top anomalies. And let me see if I can show it to you guys really fast, some of it with some of the, uh, some of the, stuff here. I mean, it, I worked pretty hard on a lot of these. Wow, look at how backed up this is. Um, a lot of these slides, we're going to be going over a lot. The trees, the all the cool stuff, the movement slides, the Egypt stuff. You know, this is something that everybody who's my subscriber has seen all these before, and I don't expect you to really like these videos. I, what I'm hoping is that you can help me by sharing this stuff. Each link, everyone's going to have an a notation where you click on it. It goes to the video where we talk about it for a long time. It's going to have links in the description to all the pictures that I use. Um, the slides that I make are going to be available on the website. So I really went all out for this one. And you know what? I, I'd much rather just do take the picture, stick it up like this, and talk. I tell you what, it's a lot of hard work. With people who do these really intricate videos, I tell you what, if there's an ad before their thing and you're interested in what that ad has to say, click on it. And it, it, not don't go to that website otherwise. Like I said, there was a Toyota ad or something up the other day. I was on my buddy Mars Anomaly's videos, and uh, I'm looking to buy another car. I, so I clicked it and went through it and looked at it because um, I would have gone to that website otherwise. You know, Support these people. I mean, a lot of people working hard, a lot of people putting together, especially these graphic interlays. I didn't realize how hard it was to make all these things. It's a lot of work that went into it. So I hope you guys share it. I like something like this to be because there's so many of those top anomaly videos out there that are just laden with that loud music, real fast blasting it out. It's going to have me talking in the background, short and to the point. And I uh, hope you guys love it. Hope you guys hit like on it. Hope you share it. Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. I'm going to get off here. Much love to you guys. Enjoy your Friday. Take it easy. Peace.